As previously mentioned, we are going to use a cutout circle for this activity where we create a truncated tetrahedron. So if you don't have a compass at home, you can use any household materials that has a circular base. So in this case, I'm going to use this coaster right here to create my circle. And you can also use uh, tapes, for example, where you have this circle base and a circular base right here. So I'm going to use my coaster now and trace my circle using my pencil. You can also use your pen if you have a pen at home or anything that you can use to trace. Now, once you have your circle right there, you are going to use a pair of scissors to cut it out. Now that we have our circle, we are going to locate the center of the circle. It would have been easier to locate the center if we have used a compass, but since we did not, and I was using my coaster to do that, we can locate the circle by creating two diameters. So how do we create a diameter of the circle using this particular one? So we are going to overlap the two semicircles, and we know that this is going to be the diameter right here and it passes through the center of the circle so we create a crease in the middle right not all the way because we only need to locate the center anyways open it up and we're going to repeat the process overlap the two semicircles and then crease in the middle again and this will create two intersecting diameters and we know that the diameters of any circle in fact are intersecting at the center of the circle. So I'm marking that one with my pencil right now. So the next step is for us to be able to bring any point on the circle to the center. So in that process, we are able to create a chord. Okay, right here, open it up again. And you will see that the chord passes through this point right here and another point right there. So a chord is any line segment connecting any two points on the circle. So we're going to fold it again. Okay, we're going to repeat the process two more times. This time around, I have to make sure that the second chord intersects the first chord at any of the two points on the circle. So I'm going to choose this point right here. Okay, bring the point on the circle to the center, but making sure that I am able to make the chords, the first one and my second one, intersect at this point right here. So I'm going to do this, increase again, there you go. And then lastly, we're going to repeat the process, bring the point on the circle to the center and this time around making sure that the third chord intersects the second one and the first one and create a crease. So we are able to create a triangle. Now what kind of triangle is this? So you can investigate at home by using your rulers, uh, find out the sides, the length of the sides, and if they are exactly the same. So I would say that this triangle is an equilateral triangle, meaning to say that all the sides have equal measures. So there we go, this is an equilateral triangle. We're gonna go back here. Now this time around, we, I am going to locate the midpoint of one of the sides of my triangle. So to do that, I'm going to bring two vertices together like this, increase a little bit on this side. If I open it up, this is going to be the midpoint of this side. Okay. Now the opposite vertex, I'm going to bring that to the midpoint, make it touch the midpoint. Of the opposite side and create a crease again and this time around we have a quadrilateral okay so four sides so what type of quadrilateral is this this is a trapezoid there are only uh, a pair there is only a pair of parallel sides so then we're gonna repeat the process if you open this up by the way okay you will notice that this is going to be the midpoint of this side and this one is also the midpoint of the other side. Okay, so we're gonna bring this up 
this vertex to the midpoint of the other side and you're going to create another figure and this time around you have another quadrilateral and you have a rhombus okay repeat the process one more time you're gonna fold this way and you create a smaller triangle and if you have to measure the size you're gonna find out that the size are also equal in measure so this is also a smaller equilateral triangle so we're going to open it up and look at this so we have a triangle here another triangle another triangle and what is true about these triangles is that they are congruent triangles and we have another triangle here which is the base so if you do this okay you are able to create a triangular pyramid or a tetrahedron okay so this is now the tetrahedron but this is not a f our final product yet so if we open up this time around I'm going to bring the vertex to the center of the circle so remember this was the center of our circle we're going to bring the vertex there and fold now if you do this we have another trapezoid repeat the process so this vertex to the center crease or fold so now we have how many sides one two three four five so we have a pentagon open it and repeat the process one more time this vertex to the center increase and we have a hexagon and this is not just any hexagon so if you uh, measure this side right here this side all the sides you are going to find out that in fact the sides are of equal measure so this is a regular hexagon so we're about to finish with our final product you're going to open up this one a little bit okay so you notice that this vertex right here has a flap on here so this second vertex i'm going to insert it to the flap or inside the flap so i'm going to create this okay so what do i have i have this one right here looks like this okay and lastly we're going to insert this vertex in here and put it inside and you create this truncated tetrahedron so again remember that originally it was a pyramid and then this is being cut by a plane so the plane truncates the pyramid or the tetrahedron and I'm going to use tape to put this in place so that you will see our final product clearly and this is going to be our truncated tetrahedron there you go